The Cube at Big Data NYC 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, WAN Disco, with support from EMC, Mark Logic, and Teradata. Now, here is your host, Jeff Kelly. Welcome back, everybody. This is theCUBE. We are live at Big Data NYC. We're in the heart of Times Square. We're here covering all the action in the city, in the big city, around big data this week. A lot happening. Of course, Strata Hadoop World is happening right down the street. We've got Big Data NYC happening here. We had a great night last night at our Capital Markets event and CUBE party celebrating five years. Um, so we're excited to get started today on day two of our coverage. Uh, Going to kick things off with Dan McClary, Senior Product Manager with Oracle. Dan, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Glad to be here, Jeff. So let's talk a little bit about the vibe down at the show this year. Um, the show, Strata Hadoop World, has moved from uh, the Hilton up on 52nd Street down to the Javits Center. It's bigger a than ever. Feel. What's, what's, what's the, what's the, the uh, what's the feel down there? It's, I mean, it's a bit different. I mean, I think you know, the core technical audience is still there. Uh, but the preponderance of companies who have real solutions that they've brought to market and are in fact doing real business has, has really exploded. And it's, it's, a, it's changed the, na the, na the nature of the show. Uh, not necessarily for better or for worse, but it's definitely, there's a different activity. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a different activity on the show floor this year. Yeah, it's interesting. I uh, had a, lot, a few conversations where we hear there's actual real deals happening down there. Mm -hmm. um, and as you mentioned before we went on camera, there's still a few sessions with live code happening. So it's still the geeks, the developers are, are having, uh, have some content for them, but there's a lot more of a business feel. It feels yeah, like. I, I'm, I'm pleased to say that I, I feel like my session still had enough live code <laughs> in it for me to feel credible as a, as a technologist. But, uh, but you know, a number, a number of the sessions focus around how big data technologies are emerging as solutions and, and mm -hmm. how those solutions can actually make it out to customers. Yes, again, we were kind of chatting beforehand and, and one of the things that you mentioned kind of struck you was how many uh, products, cust uh, companies are kind of uh, using the term end to end to describe what they do. Can you expand on that a little bit? What are what, you seeing? So it's, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, walking around both the, you know, the vendor, the vendor section, um, and attending a number of sessions, everyone wants to position an end to end solution, right? And it makes it makes good sense to me because the big data ecosystem is complex enough that to be able to span it is very very important. Although from our perspective, end to end means something a bit different. Uh, and, and our endpoints are a bit further out. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a, it's interesting because when you think of Oracle, think of in a lot of cases, think of Exadata. You think of a, a you know a complete integrated um, box essentially that you drop in your data center, you get going, you flip a switch, and you're off and running. Uh, some people think of that as end to end. Um, and now, but applying that concept to kind of the world of Hadoop is kind of a challenge. I mean, you look at the number of vendors out there, and there's so many different moving parts in any big data architecture in any given company. Uh, it's hard to, to imagine somebody could really offer a true end-to-end -end Hadoop environment. Yeah, and we, we, do, we do our best, in fact. Uh, we have, a, we have a, an appliance and engineering system that's designed mm -hmm. for the Hadoop ecosystem, and we attempt to make that as end-to-end -end as possible. And there are certain advantages that we get from that. I mean, by virtue of our involvement in the Java language, um, our ability to, to manufacture hardware, and our understanding of a lot of the ecosystem, there's a lot we can do. Um, but the ecosystem is so fast-moving that uh, you know, the end, the end point for us is still constantly shifting as well. Mm -hmm. The bare metal, you know, the JVM, that's stuff that, that we can always get right down to. But we, we are having to keep pace and, and in some ways change the way we work mm -hmm. um, as, as the big data ecosystem continues to expand at sort of an exponential rate. Mm -hmm. It's changing the way we have to develop, the way we think about release cycles. Let's, let's dig into that a little bit because when you're looking at the, the kind of the open source Hadoop world, you know, it's evolving faster than any ecosystem I've ever seen. Um, and put that into context in terms of uh, Oracle's development cycles and how if you're, if you're putting together uh, an end-to-end -end, uh, you know, appliance, a, a solution, a big data in a box, if you will, that requires a lot of you know, pre-engineering work and, and it must be, must be a challenge to align the continual development in the ecosystem around Hadoop with uh, developing and, and delivering a hardened, uh, complete enterprise-ready appliance. It's how do you how yeah, do you work with that? It, it's, been, it's been an in, it's been an interesting it's been an interesting challenge to to take what is a very well established workflow within how you how you build and ship hardware and software at Oracle, um, and meld it I would say with the best pieces of sort of agile development that end up spurring a lot of the a lot of the Hadoop ecosystem, uh, and it's created an interesting mix because hardware timelines are what they are. You know, the, the testing of hardware takes the time it takes. Um, our QA process, 
never lets up. Right? We, we cannot in any way mm -hmm. sacrifice the standards that enterprise customers have come to expect from mm -hmm. us. But this means that we have to change necessarily the way we schedule things. So our customers are, are always interested in having the latest and greatest pieces of the ecosystem. And they want the latest version of Spark, they want the latest version of Impala, they want to make sure that you know, they have the latest version of Yarn and the C-Group management is all integrated. But they also want to make sure that we've tested it the same way we test the database. And what it causes us to do then is plan, one, plan well in advance. Well in advance. We end up looking at beta code and beginning our tests there. Mm -hmm. and, and then trying to very quickly ensure that any, any new functionality we bring uh, is, is done in an agile way and in a modular enough way that it can be run through our rigorous QA processes, but at the same time, no longer has to take one to two years to actually make it to market. It's, it's been a very interesting lesson for our development teams, mm -hmm. and I think, it's, I think it's showing us as a company that there are many ways that we can bring our technology to market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that's some really good points. Uh, the, the, the development of this market, I think, is forcing uh, some of the incumbent players, some of the large uh, vendors, Oracle, uh, others, IBM and others, to really rethink the way they, they develop and release software, and in your case, package, uh, appliances, um, but from I'd love to get you know as having Oracle here on the cube, I'd love to get your perspective on the larger dynamic of big data, what's happening in the Hadoop ecosystem and the NoSQL ecosystem, and now how that's impacting Oracle as a larger enterprise. You think Oracle, you think database, and this kind of Hadoop and NoSQL movement is really that's all about the database. Uh, how is this impacting Oracle? How are you adapting? How does Oracle uh, see this world? Uh, how, do, how do they see themselves in this world? as we evolve and where big data becomes more mainstream? It's actually, it's, it's been surprisingly good for us. I think, I think if you look back a few years ago, people would declare, oh, the data warehouse is dead, Oracle and Teradata are you know, definitely in for it because Hadoop's coming to get them. And what we found is, and I think most of the people you see down at the show floor uh, have come to realize that these are adjacent technologies. And, and the preponderance of SQL and Hadoop, right, the fact that SQL is becoming sort of table stakes mm -hmm. for any big data installation, mm -hmm. is, it's really great for us because we sometimes forget that SQL is an incredibly powerful language, that declarative constructs are really useful. And it's nice to have SQL be cool again, for people to be talking <laughs> about, oh my good, have you, have mm -hmm. you heard about optimizers? Have you heard about cost-based optimizers? And so for us as an organization, it's somewhat inspiring because we can look at the work that we've done and say, oh, we do do cool, cool things. And it also causes us to start to think about what we consider to be higher, pro uh, higher order problems. Mm -hmm. So if SQL and Hadoop has become table stakes, we certainly have spent a lot of time looking at the space and, and we're great proponents of it. We, we like SQL for lots of obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you know, we see things like Hive and Hive on Spark and Spark SQL and Cloud Airs and Paula and we really embrace a lot of these things, and we ship these as part of our as part of our appliance. Um, some of these things we use ourselves internally. Uh, but when we then ca came to a point where we wanted to deliver Oracle SQL to this sort of an environment, it seemed it it seemed like we weren't solving the right problem if we only said, "Well, here's Oracle SQL that runs against Hadoop." Mm -hmm. We tried to step back and say, "SQL on Hadoop is going to mature in the ways that it matures, and there are going to be many ways to to get that." If it's table stakes, you can pretty much get it how you want to get it. What could we do that was unique? What could we do that was, that was really representative of our, of our capability, not only as a database company, but as a data management company? Mm. And it was to this end that we, we, you know, we announced this summer in GA, just this last month, uh, a product called Big Data SQL. And, and this for us is really, this is very cool for us because we're, we're able to say, do what you want in a Hadoop environment. Do what you want in a SQL data store. But when it's time to bring the value created there back to your existing business infrastructure, to your existing applications, you can now use Oracle SQL to effectively query all of that data in place. It's no, no longer having to pipe stuff across, mm -hmm. load it into a database, or you know, wait, wait for someone to develop a better ODBC or JDBC connection to the store of your choice. Mm -hmm. You can instead say, here are the things I used to run my business. Here's the net new value I'm creating in the big data ecosystem. Tying these things together is as simple as saying, oh, just join them. Mm. And, and for us, that's been extremely cool. The reception's been really, really great. Yeah, I, I, I think that you know, one of the, the areas where vendors like Oracle ha have an opportunity here is, is to move a little bit higher up the stack and helping organizations, as we talked about, this is really complex stuff. 
and helping organizations understand how it's going to integrate into their infrastructure and connect systems at, almost at a virtual layer above kind of the, the, the data stores and the databases. Um, because you're going to have data, every, you know, the idea of a f one physical data lake, I think, is, is not going to happen at most organizations. It's going to be more of a federated virtual model. And I think companies like Oracle have, have an opportunity to bring their expertise around things like SQL uh, and other, other integration capabilities to, to create that kind of more virtual data infrastructure that allows people, allows the business users not to worry about where the data is stored. I mean, some of it, Jeff, is the, is the promise that Oracle made to its users 30 years ago, which is effectively no application changes, and we'll run your code in more places and faster. Uh, it just extends, right? The, the fact that you have an ORM that speaks SQL, well, I want your SQL to run in more places across more data. I don't want you to have to change your existing investment. I want you to mm -hmm. focus on creating new value. Mm -hmm. And we really view a lot of our work in the big data space at that higher level in terms of saying this is a rapidly evolving ecosystem. And if you look at the Hadoop ecosystem, it evolves far more rapidly than a single vendor could ever, mm -hmm. ever really hope to tame. And so what we can do is fill in the things our customers need, whether it be things around security, things around functionality, things around accessibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the, so one of the themes we've kind of, I've noticed over the last day or so with a lot of the Cube interviews is we've been talking more about, less about the, the hardware, the plumbing, the infrastructure, more about what are we going to do with all this data. I think SQL and Hadoop is one part of that, but another part is kind of the, uh, that we've been talking a lot about is machine learning, mm -hmm. and really applying um, machine learning to data in real time, so when you're you can you know uh, uh, impact a customer uh, decision in real time or or impact a, a business process in real time. Um, what's Oracle doing in that space? How do you look at, for lack of a better term, kind of operationalizing? in real time some of these insights that people are, are trying to develop in Hadoop and other big data stores. I, so it's, it's interesting, I think machine learning is probably a, a close, uh, close second to end to end in terms of buzzwords <laughs> around the yeah. show this year. Spark may actually take the, take the cake <laughs> completely, but uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because as much as there is I what you would consider sort of traditional concerns, how do I integrate this, how do I secure this, the, the rise in demand for data discovery, for, for data discovery beyond BI, for machine learning and for stream deployment has, has really exploded in the last 12 months, I think. And we're certainly trying to make sure that we're well positioned to offer our customers solutions, but also well positioned to allow customers to operationalize other solutions that they choose to deploy them or build them themselves. So it, on the one hand, we announced a product at Oracle Open World called Big Data Discovery. And this is, this is designed to, met, to, to allow the business user to do the data discovery, the machine learning, and the exploration of data that they need to mm -hmm. in a very friendly business user environment, a visual environment, but then underneath, harness the power of the big data ecosystem. Largely, this is built on top of Spark, um, uses a lot of things that have come out of MLlib, mm -hmm. and, and really gets you kind of the best of both worlds. Here's, here's a very comfortable business user interface, but underneath you have all of the mm -hmm. power of the Hadoop ecosystem. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, um, we're very active in supporting and deploying analytical solutions, be they on Spark, be they on Hadoop, or be they within Oracle database. We're, we're big proponents of R. Um, we embrace and support R in a way that many other companies don't. Uh, and I think we're really looking forward to seeing what applications our customers end up building with some of these new technologies. Part of the reasons that we're very interested in what we can do with, with some of these new technologies is we're, if, we, if we can help our customers operationalize these things and do them, do them well, it'll also drive our inspiration for new products as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you mentioned customers, so let's talk a little bit about that. What, what are you seeing out there from your customers in terms of you know, the most exciting things you, you're seeing them doing around this space, um, whether it's analytics, machine learning, um, what are some of the, the more interesting things and more forward-looking things you're seeing? It's, you know, it, it's interesting because I, I think our customers fall into many, many buckets. Um, the most exciting cases, though, invariably come down to customers coming back to us, you know, 12 months, 18 months on and saying, you know, this is data we never could have had before. And we weren't sure if it was going to be useful, but the fact that we have it has actually changed something material in our business, whether it's whether it's a quicker time to a decision around supply chain or new product placement, or simply being able to provide a team of analysts data that they've been asking for for years. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's really remarkable how that's, it's really remarkable and really heartwarming to hear the stories of, 
we captured this data and you were right, it was great for this process, and now, and now we're getting other parts of the business coming and saying, mm -hmm. what questions could we ask? What new answers could we find if we had access to this, this same data that you've captured for us? Yep. It's, it's democratizing the internals of companies that, that work with us in, in a way that's really, really pleasant to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because the, the idea, one of the big, uh, I think, value propositions here of big data is the, the return on investment you get on data increases the more you use that data. There's multiple mm -hmm. uses for any one set of data, and if you can open up that data to multiple business units, multiple users, uh, multiple use cases, you're going to get more about that's more value you're getting out of that data. As, as a capital asset, data is somewhat unique <coughs> in that you can you can invest it many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Dan, unfortunately, we, we're just about out of time. I want to give you the last word. What's um, what's on the roadmap with, from Oracle in terms of big data? That you, at least what you can share, um, and and what's what's kind of your top priorities going forward in the next six months, twelve year, uh, twelve months? Um, you know, next year when we're back here, what, what will be some of the things so we'll be talking about? I think I think Jeff, it's going to be really simple: greater operational simpl simplicity. Uh, greater access to all of your data, and, and really just s speed of operation, speed of time to value. It's mm. That's good stuff. Dan McClary from Oracle, thanks so much for joining us on theCUBE, appreciate it. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll be right back with our next segment here live at Big Data NYC after this. <laughs>